Will you miss out on your best benefit as a federal employee in retirement? Hi, I'm Micah Shalansky, and this is the FERS Federal Fact Check. You know, as I'm talking with federal employees and teaching classes across the country, whether in person or more virtual right now, one thing I like to articulate all the time is what your best benefit is. And hands down, it's your health insurance. And we have a great question today from Tracy asking just about that. Tracy says, is there any reason why you didn't include MRA and 10 in the group below when speaking about qualifying for FEHB? I thought this group would also be qualified for health benefits if you held FEHB for five years. Thanks, Tracy. Tracy, that is a wonderful question. And what she's referring to is we're talking about immediate retirement rules with an unreduced pension. But let's just talk about FEHB right now, the Federal Employee Health Benefits, which I get to say is the outside looking in, again, is one of the best benefits you have as a federal employee. Now, there are two rules that you as a federal employee have to, to meet in order to keep your health insurance into retirement. And by the way, there's two rules your spouse has to meet to make sure that they can maintain FEHB into retirement if something were to happen to you. So the first rule that you have to meet is number one, you must retire with the eligibility of an immediate pension. Now, the key word here is eligibility. So what does that mean? Well, under FERS, that means it's MRA, minimum retirement age, right? And 30 years of service. You could be age 60 and have 20 years, put years up here, right? And 20 years of service. You could be age 62 and have five years of service. These are all examples of an immediate pension that is unreduced. But there's also the options of MRA and 10. And in MRA and 10 retirement, this is a reduced pension, right? This is the ability to be able to retire early at your minimum retirement age with only 10 years of federal service, but your pension's gonna be reduced by 5% every year you're under the age of 62. So it comes with a pretty substantial reduction of 5% a year for every year, again, you're under the age of 62. So it's a good option that's there if we wanted to pivot to do something else, but it allows you to keep your health insurance into retirement. So all of these count, you know what also counts is an early out option. An early out would be any age, ooh, I'm gonna put these kind of in different categories, right? Uh, any age, with 25 years plus or service, or age 50 and 20 years of federal service or more for an early out. So if you get this option, this too allows you to maintain your health insurance into retirement. So again, that first rule is you must be able to retire with the eligibility of an immediate pension. So your pension would start right away. All of these give you that ability. So that's the first thing that you have to do. The second thing that you have to do, as Tracy pointed out, is you must be an FEHB for five years prior to retirement or the soonest you are eligible to start. So it's really important to make sure you are in FEHB. Now, for my TRICARE recipients, those are on a military retirement under TRICARE, your TRICARE time actually does count towards that five years of FEHB qualification. So you kind of get a double right there, which is really nice, but that's only with TRICARE. All right, so those are the two rules that you as the federal employee have to do. What about your spouse? In order for your spouse to maintain FEHB, there's has to, two things have to happen. Number one, they must be receiving a survivor pension right? There's not a dollar amount requirement with this, but they must be receiving a survivor pension when you pass away. Number two, they must be enrolled in FEHB before you pass away. They must be enrolled in FEHB before you pass away. So being up in Alaska, right, we have a lot of oil companies that are out here and they have some phenomenal health plans. And often what I'll see is one federal employee and then one oil company worker and the oil company worker has better health care. And so the federal employee has self only. And then maybe there's a family plan over on the oil side. It works out fine. But what happens if the federal employee passes away? the health insurance dies with them. So it's really important to make sure your spouse is on that plan. So if something happens to you, they can maintain that FEHB insurance. Again, it's a great benefit that you have, and I get to say that as the outside looking in at how good it is. Make sure you know these facts, make sure you know how your benefits work so you can get the most out of your pension. If you have more questions like this about how your benefits work, go down below and submit them, and maybe you can be featured on the next FERS Federal Fact Check.